The sophomore residency requirement will take, uh, take in effect, I guess, or take place uh, starting in fall 2012. Um, so next year's, uh, next year's incoming class uh, will be asked to, uh, required actually, to stay on campus for two semesters, or two years rather than the traditional two semesters. Uh, by having a second year program, uh, there's some things that we can do and involve in our programmatic efforts in the residence halls uh, to help with, maybe help prevent the sophomore slump, if you will. Um, we, uh, we, str we feel strongly as student affairs professionals that engagement is a huge predictor for success in, in staying here for four years. So it's a retention issue. It's, uh, it, and so retention was obviously talked about. How do we, uh, how do we keep students uh, both engaged, or which, which will in turn keep them successful? How are they going to stay here for four years? Um, so retention, it's about support. It's about development. And we think we can, by having uh, the sophomores on campus, we can help hit all those areas. So. My question is, will they limit the number of parking to sophomores also, as they did to freshmen this year, and what the issues will be with finding a parking space to be able to park? There will definitely be kids who don't get permits, if they're, uh, especially sophomores, because I know it's limited already, and certain sophomores weren't able to get permits this year. Uh, what I'll tell you is, um, right now we house about, and it's average anywhere between 70 and 80 percent, we already, we, it kind of the culture is already there. Sophomores, uh, for the most part, usually stay on campus for their second year, and then after that, as juniors and seniors, uh, students really start to explore off campus. Um, according to our numbers, we're looking at a potentially uh, 75 to 160 additional students, uh, once you, if our numbers remain consistent over the next few years. Um, we feel comfortable that we can do that without he any heavy tripling. Um, we'll, uh, the, the challenge will come down the road if we have to take another building offline to completely renovate. But after this year with McVicker back up, we'll be at full strength, I like to say. Um, so we think we'll have enough beds at that point to accommodate the incoming class. So. But the disadvantage is, is you don't really have your own room. Sometimes you just want your own privacy and you don't really have that. You have to follow the rules. You don't really want to. Off campus, you have your own space. You can kind of live by your own rules, whereas, you know, on campus, you're strict to campus rules and policies like that. You don't get that off campus experience. It's just not the same. You, and if there's people out there that enjoy drinking, then you can potentially get in a lot of trouble on campus. It's not fair to make somebody live somewhere they don't want to, especially since. Um, Living off campus is definitely a cheaper route to go. I'm saving like thousands of dollars living off campus and maybe kids can't afford and if they're forced to live on campus, that's not fair. If there's a situation where somebody, a family came to us and said, oh, we just can't afford to do it, we need to do this, we would work with them on that. Uh, we, we've had um, extraordinary circumstances before. Uh, we recognize things come up, uh, people lose jobs unfortunately, and financial things change. Um, if, uh, if we could basically, if a student could make, make a case that it wasn't going to work for them and their family financially and, the, and it, they would have to leave school because of the requirement, we, obviously we would do our best to make it work for them, whatever that meant. So. Advantages living on campus are definitely the accessibility to resources. Um, you always get the library daily, the computer lab, as well as other, other resources. People are a lot easier to um, to access. You have a, you can meet a lot more friends on campus because you're in such close proximity to people. And uh, food, food's right there. Honestly, the main goal that college I think is doing by implementing the policy is because they're losing money because people are moving off campus their sophomore year, and nobody really wants to live on campus anymore. So I think they're just trying to make sure they're still getting money. Money. That's that's what I think. I really think that they want the they want the extra money. It's I believe it's around thirty two hundred dollars a semester to stay on campus, and for me it was about two thousand dollars plus utilities. Um, but that's on the high side. So you, you definitely save money going off campus. But um, I I really think that they're they're just they want that money. The, some of the folks have been asking is is the, the budget cuts from Albany. Uh, taking away uh, some of our money in regards to what we use it for from the residential system? The answer is no. Uh, we, uh, we would fill the beds regardless. And, and we, what we typically do is we use our, you know, we, we uh, recruit transfers heavily or, or not heavily depending on where our numbers are coming in. So 
Um, no, it, it had nothing. It's not a financial decision. It was based completely on support, retention, and transition, and trying to help students. So nothing to do with Albany's cuts. I don't think the sophomore resident residency policy is fair because they are required to live on campus as freshmen, and I think that that's requirement enough for them. And since they are college students, that they should have the opportunity to choose as a sophomore. The uh, the, the requirement or the way that the policy is going to read is if you live 30 miles uh, outside, uh, if you live within 30 miles of the campus, um, you can be considered a commuter. Uh, and that actually applies for first year students too. Um, so we're going to adopt that same policy. So, um, so say maybe somebody that lives uh, uh, in Churchville decides to live on the first year, the next year they're going to commute, commute, that's fine. Um, and that's, and, and, and I guess the one thing that I want folks to truly understand, um, Things, things happen, things come up, and if, the, if they're in an in, in-between area or uh, come see us, um, I, I believe there's always an exception uh, to, ev to every rule. Uh, I think certain, uh, we're in the business of supporting students ultimately, and uh, different circumstances come up that might require, it's like, I can't do this, and here's why. And so we, and we have that now for first-year students. So, and uh, I'm comfortable where, where, where we're sitting right now, that uh, we're basically same principles, same guidelines as we're doing for first-years, we're going to do with second-years. Uh, so, um, so yes, it's 30 miles uh, we, uh, is, our, is our area. We understand that if, if, if you're in Victor, that might be 36 miles, but again, I'm not in the business to nickel and dime. It's, if you're in from the Rochester area and you want to commute from home, we're going to make that work for you.